Hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to be talking about taming the tongue, which is so important in our walk. So what is your mouth speaking? Blessings or constant negativity? Faith or fear? Cursing or praising? Gratitude or complaints? Are you speaking about how big your God is or how big your problems are? People don't always realize the power behind our words. Spells are words. Prayers are words. God created everything with his words. Let there be light and there was light. In the spiritual realm, our words hold power. Remember the fig tree. It withered and died from the words Jesus spoke to it. He cursed it and it died. Many don't realize how they have cursed themselves or others at times. Don't speak cursings over your life, your situation, your problems, your children, or anyone for that matter. Be mindful of your words. Take every thought captive because your thoughts become your words, and your words can bless or curse. Many times in a deliverance that we've performed, you know, we'll find the spirit of witchcraft. And witchcraft can be there for many different reasons. But it's not always because someone put a ritual or a spell on someone. Sometimes it's because someone spoke word curses over that person, hate and evil towards that person. They may not have even realized that those words would actually harm the other person and allow witchcraft to be upon them. This is why the word says for us to bless our enemies so we don't fall into the trap of Satan to harm others. Because sometimes when we think we're complaining, we think we're just complaining. But the enemy, what we found is demons, they don't play. If you say, I wish that person would just D-I-E. You just think I'm saying this out of deep emotional torment. Like you have no idea what that person did to me. I just wish they would blank. We think there's no harm. Nobody hears me. I'm just, it's, I don't mean it, you know. And I'm not saying any of you have ever said that. I've seen this in witchcraft or not in witchcraft, I've seen this in deliverance when there's a spirit of witchcraft, the witchcraft spirit will say, I will ask, did someone put witchcraft on them? And they'll say, no. And we'll say, did someone curse them? And they'll say, yes. On purpose, no. They just was so hurt or angry towards that person, they said things. And those things, the demons don't care if you meant it or not. It's just like casting a spell. The demon's like, cool, got it, I'll go do that. They take that in the spirit realm. Not every time, and there's levels of protection. Don't think every time someone says something mean to you, there's gonna be a spirit of witchcraft. That's not how it is. But there are times that words have the power to curse. What happens when they were giving, when he was giving the blessing to Esau and Jacob? Once he said the blessing, his son's like, take it back, take it back, switch it, switch it. He's like, no, it's already gone out. The words have gone out. The words have gone out. Right? Yes. So, that's why we got to be mindful of our words. Even if we think, oh, I didn't mean it, or, oh, you know, mad. I was just mad, or just, you have to be mindful of that. Because a lot of times what people have done in private, there's been an effect on it. Many don't realize they've actually cursed their situation by constant complaints and speaking fear over it. If you run around constantly talking about your problems, you will end up with more problems. Instead, speak life to that mountain. You speak faith about that problem. Speak the solution, not the fear of what could happen. Declare victory over that issue. Be diligent to be careful about what you speak. From today forth, speak blessings in life. And in uh, true Julia fashion, we'll do the next 40 verses. <laughs> 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 but I do have a bunch of verses. <laughs> so, starting off, Proverbs 
21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. This is not figurative. Sometimes we think the Bible is all figurative or poetry or parables, things like that. And yes, there are plenty of that in the scriptures. But many things the Lord is saying in the word are literal. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. When Elijah called down fire from heaven, he called it down words. Words are powerful. And that's why people run to like witchcraft and stuff is because they even find there is power in words. Some, and it's not always good power in words. James 1, 26. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. And you know me, I never shy away from those harsh verses because I don't think they're talked about enough. I mean, look at online. And I, I love all the soft, warm verses. Don't get me wrong. I love those. They bring me comfort. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yeah, absolutely. But it's like social media. You see all the cute, fuzzy verses, which is great. They're the word. It's true. There's a balance of, of comforting verses and correcting verses. But what you'll find is a lot of people don't share the correcting verses because they don't want to make anyone feel bad. But the thing is, he disciplines those who he loves. And we're his children. So he's going to discipline us. It says, you know, if you think, you know, you're religious or you think, you know, you're doing really great with God, but you haven't even tried to tame your tongue. You're deceiving yourself and your religion is worthless. Why would he use such a strong word of worthless? Is because the tongue holds so much power for good and for evil. Proverbs 12, 18. There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise bring healing. With your words, you could either stab someone and, you know, hurt them. It feels like a wound. Or you can bring healing to them with your words. And once again, this is going to be a theme. You're going to see some similar verses here throughout scripture. Once again, like I always say, if the Lord says it over and over and over again, it's because it's such an important thing for us to grasp and understand. 1 Peter 3.10 For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. You want to love your life? You want to see good days? It's, it's recommending to do so. You must bridle this tongue from evil. And don't speak deceit. Luke 6, 45. The good person, out of the good treasure of his heart, produces good. The evil person, out of the evil treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. You can tell a lot from the, the condition of someone's heart by what comes out of their mouth consistently. Right? Uh, we all have met someone that they can't stop talking about every single problem. Their life is constant chaos. And, and a lot of times, they will constantly tell all kinds of people. They'll call 10 different friends and tell 10 different people of the horrible thing that happened to them. They spend so much of their life constantly confessing all these issues. And they don't even realize they're bringing it upon themselves. And this isn't the law of attraction. The law of attraction is demonic. But this is a law of God. There is a law of God that what you speak holds power. The law of attraction, which is different, that's in New Age. It's where they believe in speaking things to the universe to receive it. That's different. Now, we do speak faith, and God can bring blessings in faith. So the enemy, he'll copycat things of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. He'll copycat things of the Lord. So this is not, I'm not promoting the law of attraction, just in case anyone ever watches this online and says, 
Ooh, that sounds like that witchcraft law of attraction stuff. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is biblical. Your tongue holds power. When you speak to the mountain, it moved. When Jesus spoke, go, go. Words hold authority and power, right? But going back to that verse about what's in your heart, you must be wise and just know this if, if you notice your speech is constantly negative just know i need the lord to work on my heart i may have some wounds that need to be bound up right i might have some stuff that i thought i <coughs> dealt with already that's still troubling my heart <clears throat> right and god has compassion this isn't to shame anyone say recognize there's a room there's room to grow right if you're very critical of everyone around you, that might be a sign that there's somewhere inside of you that you don't feel enough. So pushing others down, some reason makes you feel higher. You'll see that in people where they're constantly critical of everyone. It's usually not even that all those people have those negative things. It's because that person is hurting inside or evil inside in one way or another, right? This next one is a big one. When I was, um, one of the, probably the most important verses that we're gonna talk about, because it came up so much while I was writing this study over and over and over again, this, the, this section of verses kept coming up. So, James 3, 2 through 12. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man. Able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits, which if you don't know, it's those things um, in a horse's mouth to help control the horse. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ship also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. The tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members Staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poisons. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who were in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives and grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. So, in this verse, it says no one can tame the tongue. But in a few verses ago, it says your religion is worthless if you don't tame the tongue. So obviously, it is part of our goal to tame the tongue. Don't People may mistake that and be like, oh, it's impossible to tame the tongue. Don't even try. No, 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 no. It is impossible maybe to fully tame it to perfection, but you can get closer and closer to the image of Jesus Christ and be more like Christ with your words. But it's talking about how you can destroy a whole your whole life with your mouth. Somebody says something wrong to their boss, fired. A husband says the wrong, you know, constantly puts down the wife, destroyed <coughs> marriage. People, how many friendships, sisterships, brotherships, relationships have been utterly destroyed by things people said to one another? It is a powerful tool the tongue, the lips, the words, and it can cause a consuming fire in one's life. It can direct one's life. It says like a ship. 
your tongue can direct your life. What you choose, if you choose to speak love and faith, that's going to direct your life one way. But if you choose to constantly complain, to criticize, to bicker, to slander, whatever it is, to use it for evil, it can literally set your whole life on fire. And you may not even realize it. You may not even realize the repercussions that sometimes the calamity you're in is an effect of things you've spoken for years. You wonder, oh, why? I don't know why that sister's not talking to me anymore. And you don't even realize you said so many things that hurt that sister's feelings. It happens. It's the truth. So we must make it a very top priority to tame this thing. For blessings, for cursings, for maintaining these relationships that mean so much to us. And we, we often will say things we don't mean. We need to, to definitely work on that, to not speak things we don't mean. Don't speak things you don't mean. Don't constantly complain. Don't call all your girlfriends when there's a problem. I'm not saying you can never confide in someone. Like, if there's a real issue to confide in that you need wisdom for. But don't be the person that sits here and talks about your problems all day long. You will get more problems. Some people have been so trained this way. I've met people that the, they're, it's like their way to get attention is by complaining or by their life being in chaos because that's the only way they know how to get love and attention from people is the pity me, the woe is me. They're stuck in this cycle. They're even on social media crying out about every problem. I'm not saying you can't confide in people, but you'll notice sometimes there's a person who literally is stuck in this ongoing cycle of negativity and it's just all they know how to do because they don't, they're so untrained in this area of taming the tongue. And it destroys relationships. It does. I've seen people blast their spouse on social media. No discretion. You're like, why would you ever do that to your spouse? Like, how, how do you come back from that? They'll, they're not going to trust that you're going to honor them. The tongue is dangerous. And we must be aware. Ephesians 4.29 let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that <coughs> may give grace to those who hear. God has given us such unlimited grace. If, if somebody, if I could look at one person and see a list of everything they've ever done wrong against God, it would be a long list of what we've done. But God doesn't expose us like that. He washes it, cleans, forgets it, and sees you for the new creation you are. Yet sometimes when people look at one another, they can't give grace to one another and they can't get over it and they won't forget. It's like, oh yeah, sister did something mean to me 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm telling you there are people still, you know, that it, or even for a few weeks. And it's something so minor. It's like, who cares? Like get over it. God washes us clean. We must give grace like we want grace. And the damage people do by speaking behind people's backs about this and that and the other thing, it is so, it destroys their reputation. It, oh, it just brings so much destruction. We must be wise about our tongues. Ephesians 4.29, and I'm not saying there's never an issue where you bring up an issue because there's an issue. There are situations where bringing something up is important and okay. We're talking about careless words or just complaining or speaking negatively. A lot of times you're like, even to your spouse, well, that's my spouse. I'm going to tell them anything. You know how much gossip goes on just between a marriage sometimes? Like, oh, yeah, did you see your family did this and that? And <laughs> Oh, my gosh, so much gossip happens just in a marriage sometimes. You have to yes. be even mindful in a marriage or with your best friend or with your sister or with your mom, whoever those close people are that you talk to, that doesn't give you a free pass to have a loose tongue. You know, Ephesians 4, 29, let no, oh, I already read that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Proverbs 15, 4, a gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. I don't need to say much. Some of them, it's just good to read them, but they speak for themselves, right? Proverbs 21, 23, whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. 
people will do a lot of damage. Sometimes they'll just, you know, they'll go through a bad season. And we gotta be mindful when we're in a bad mood or when we're having a bad season, you have to be careful because some people have burnt all their bridges when they're in a bad place. Yeah. You know, they just don't care anymore. They're like, they just go off on people and suddenly they've burned their bridges <coughs> with relationships. And then they find themselves alone. They're like, nobody's here for me. Okay, <laughs> well, you know, you gotta keep yourself out of trouble by keeping your mouth and your tongue. Even when you feel justified, even when you feel like, oh, if you knew what that person did to me, <laughs> you know? Even if you think like, I have every right to be upset, that doesn't give you every right to use your tongue for evil, right? No matter what the situation is, right? Proverbs 10, 19, when words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. Psalms 141.3, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. And that's something we can do is, you know, the scriptures do say it is pretty hard to tame that tongue. That's why we all have room to grow. Nobody's coming up here saying, you know, we've, we're, we've fully tamed the tongue. But we can reach out to the Lord and say, Lord, please help me. Help me with this, Right? Can we? Oh, no, I guess it's going to everyone. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. I'll share, I'll share the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Psalms 30. That's a good thing to say. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Psalms 34, 13. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Like I said, a lot of these sound very similar, but when the Lord says it over and over and over, it's because he knows the impact this one little thing can have on your whole life, right? it can really impact your whole life. I'm telling you, if you walk and speak faith, speak love, you let things roll off of you, and you speak kind things behind people's backs, even those who did you wrong, when you start blessing your enemies, when, you, when you're when you known, like everybody knows, like, oh yeah, that girl did her dirty, but you're speaking blessings, you're speaking love, oh, let me tell you, the blessings that come from that. You're gonna reap what you sow. You, you sow love, you're gonna reap love, you know? If you can really destroy your own life through your tongue. People do it all the time. You see those videos. They, you see people videotaping people going crazy. They'll be at the store. Somebody will get mad at them and they'll go crazy. Those videos will go viral. They lose their job. They lose everything. Because out of the heart, the mouth speaks. When they think no one's looking, all of a sudden now, they see this ugliness. And a lot of their family would probably be like, I've never seen her talk like that. But when they think they're not, they're gonna get away with it, and they're just, you know, they don't think that video is gonna go online and go viral. Suddenly, <laughs> the evil in their heart speaks, and it destroys their life. What they should have done is dealt with that broken heart, dealt with those ungodly thoughts, dealt with that, so their mouth spoke different. Because you never know when it's gonna come back to bite you. You even see this, like, they'll pull up tweets or something from, like, years ago and someone will be like, oh, look what they said, 15, not 15, eight years ago. And those words that they put out come back to haunt them. And they thought, they don't even remember they said all that. They're like, oh, my Atlanta, what was I thinking? <laughs> but you know what? That's why you got to be mindful about what you say. You have to be mindful about what you say. <laughs> Psalm 34, 13. I already said that. Yeah. <laughs> Julia, it's worth repeating, obviously. <laughs> Proverbs 13.3. Um, it sounds similar to the other ones, but I, I, I think I double-checked that I didn't double any verses. Um, but it sounds similar. But it's that important. Uh, Solomon, in this Proverbs, said, talked about the tongue a lot. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life he who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. That's a good one to memorize. That's a very simple one, impactful. You're gonna preserve your own life by zipping it up when you need to. Tame that tongue. There's times you're like, I'm gonna write this whole paragraph, and the Holy Spirit's like, nope. And you're like, delete. <laughs> or when somebody says something mean, you're like, well. And then the Holy Spirit says, zip it. Have a great day. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. The scripture doesn't lie. People have destroyed their own lives by their words. 
Proverbs 26, 20. For lack of wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no whisperer, quarreling ceases. Which also has to do with, you know, the words. Matters have been drug out so long when they start telephoning from person to person, and then the person hears that I have all these people know about what happened, and oh man, it just becomes drama. Matthew 12, and I'm not saying there's, and, I, and I'm clear about this, there are issues, times you need to work through issues. There are absolutely going to be times where things need to be worked through, okay? But for the most part, in general in the world, there's a lot of things that are said that don't need to be said. And there's a lot of people who are just angry, especially online. Online, I've given people, they feel like this license to just say all this crazy stuff they would have never said in a million years in real life. They, like, say they see somebody, they just start breaking down everything they don't like about them. When would they ever do that? See someone walk into church, by the way, I don't like this, 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 and this about you, and your doctrine on this is dumb. Like, they would never do it in real life. No. But online, all of a sudden, they get this empowerment to, like, go crazy. People are so mean online, so ruthless to one another. It's like, chill out, guys. Love one another. It's scary out there. Like people, the things people say, it's like, why, why would you say that to someone? Matthew 12, 36 through 37. I tell you, Jesus speaking, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. This is a verse that should sharpen us, that should make us feel like I really need to take this seriously because I'm going to stand before the Lord, Lord, and every word, every word is going to be taken into account. That's, you know, all those things you just think you're just saying out of anger, he's going to say, why would you speak about your brother or sister like that? I have forgiven you of so much. And some people, they probably think they're saved. There's people out there that think they're saved or Christian. They just said, said a prayer and had no relationship, and then they spent their whole life being awful people with their mouths. But, you know, some people will be condemned by the level of what they spoke in their life. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, which you speak, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. How many of those had to do with your tongue? Haughty eyes, that's different, that's more pride. A lying tongue, tongue. A heart that devises wicked plans. They usually speak or do those wicked plans. Um, Breathing out lies and discord among brothers. So much of that has to do with taming the tongue, right? It says, it says six things the Lord hates and seven that are abomination to him. He feels very strongly about when we don't tame our tongues. And we do this especially in the body. He feels very strongly about it. James 1.19 Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. That should be our recommendation of how we deal um, with this. Be quick to hear. Try to hear other people's perspectives. You know, not just how it made you feel, but try to understand why are they saying these things or acting this way. Be slow to speak. There's going to be so many times you want to speak on something and you're just better off Saying nothing. Just letting it go. It's going to bless yourself to be like, that's not, that's not even worth it. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to open that can of worms. I'm just going to zip it. You know, be slow to anger. Be compassionate and graceful towards one another. Matthew 15, I'm going to read 10 through 11, and then I'm going to skip down and re read 18 through 20. And he called the people to him and said to them, hear and understand it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. 
There are many believers that are literally defiled by what they constantly speak. The Lord is saying it literally, we want to be clean before the Lord. Literally, people are defiled before the Lord because of what they constantly speak. He's really letting us know that there is power in our words, and it has a compounding effect on our lives, spiritually, physically, relationally, so many different ways, okay? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. Once again, what you're speaking is a heart issue. It shows what's in your heart. I can tell you right now, I meet people all the time that like, oh yeah, I got faith in God, I'm standing in faith, but their words tell a completely different story. Same thing with this. A lot of people say, oh, my heart is good. No, 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 no. I can tell by what you're speaking. There's some stuff going on in there you need Jesus to work on. And that's the grace of God. He can fix it. It's a heart issue. God, can, if you felt rejected your whole life, God can fix that. If you feel insecure, God can fix that. If you have been hurt, hurt people, hurt people. He can fix that. But you also have to allow him in enough to fix that. And you also need to recognize, I may have an issue in here that needs to be dealt with. If you notice my tongue is kind of out of control, it's probably because there's something deep in here that needs to be worked on. Some of the meanest people you know, it's because they got a lot of wretchedness. Even if they think they're super tough, men, I'm tough, no, I'm good, hard shell, deep 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 in there there's something that needs to be mended right proverbs 15 29 the heart of a righteous ponders how to answer but the mouth of the wicked pour out evil things so the heart of the righteous ponder how to answer sometimes we just speak immediately what we feel we speak immediately what we think we shouldn't jump immediately to speaking. <clears throat> Nothing needs to be dealt with always in that instant. Sometimes it's good. Have you ever like said something and then 24 hours later you wake up, you're like, oh man, I don't even feel that way anymore. I wish I didn't say all that. <laughs> like I was probably hungry. I was irritable. I was hot. It was hot downtown. So I was kind of irritable, you know? And then the next day you're like, oh my gosh, should I really do that? Oh man. I know I've had moments like that, you know? Let's be real, right? There, sometimes you just gotta wait 24 hours, wait 48 hours, especially if it's a really intense issue, don't respond right away. Sometimes, and the people may demand it, you may feel the pressure, like, why aren't you answering me? Say, hey, I just need to go be alone with my father and pray about this, and I'll get back to you um, when I feel like I have the right answer. God bless you. So you don't need to go somewhere that are really concerned, right? You could explain to them, hey, um, I'm feeling strong emotions right now. I just need to go spend time with my father. Or just say, hey, I love you. I'm not trying to ignore you, um, but I'll get back to you tomorrow if I can. You know, something like that. It's okay to not always answer right away. And some people will push you to try to deal with something in that moment. But if you really feel like your words are not going to go well because you feel the emotions are so strong, I recommend taking a step back. Right? Take a step back and think, how can I answer this? How does God want me to answer? Like pray in the closet about it, forgive, and try, try your best to think, how would God respond to this person? How would God want me to respond to this person? Ponder how to answer. Because the mouth of the wicked just goes, it just goes, it's called word vomit. We've heard about this, word vomit, where they just and they just go. They just let all that yucky feeling out and they think it's gonna make the inside feel better. It actually makes them feel worse because then they feel really guilty, like, oh my gosh. Or they don't feel guilty. They feel good. Some people feel good when they make other people feel bad. That's, that's when he's talking about evil people. Some people feel good when they tear people down. Narcissists, things like that, they relish in hurting people. There are people like that, don't get me wrong. We live in an evil world. But us as believers, it says the righteous ponders how to answer. 
We don't want to hurt somebody. We don't want to cause discord, right? The next one, I wasn't gonna read it, but I'll throw it in. Colossians 4, 6, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person, right? Matthew 5, 22. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to counsel. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. Anger definitely has to do with your tongue, too. It starts in here, but it comes out here. Whatever happens, you may have anger in your heart. That's like I said, another heart issue. Some people have a very angry heart. They've been hurt, and they're like, I have every reason to be angry. You don't even know my life. You don't know how many people did me wrong. You don't know what I've been through. And then it comes out. And it comes out in various ways. So you must, you know, you must tame that tongue. You don't want to insult your brother. Don't call someone a fool. Don't talk down on people. He's warning you. Jesus himself is saying, you may be liable to hell fire if you don't tame that tongue. Okay, Proverbs 17, 9. Whoever covers an offense seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates close friends. Like I said, destruction comes with the tongue. Proverbs 29, 20. Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. So there could be someone who the Lord, you know, is considered, now we're not supposed to be calling someone a fool, but someone who maybe is just all over the place, there's more hope for them than someone who can't tame their tongue. You could be highly, highly educated. You could be well respected by man, but if you can't control that tongue, there's more hope for a fool than for that person. Proverbs 10, 20, the tongue of the righteous is choice silver, the heart of the wicked is of little worth. Proverbs 19, 5. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will not escape. So the good news about this verse is if you've ever experienced someone lying about you, or a false witness going around slandering you, you don't need to do anything. You speak love, you bless them, you love on them, you pray for them, you speak good about them no matter what they say about you and just know they will not go unpunished because the Lord he says vengeance is mine I will repay he's our defender so it says right here it will not go unpunished those who breathe out lies will not escape so just you can have peace it don't matter you can say whatever you want about me my daddy ain't gonna let that slide <laughs> no. you can do whatever you want I forgive you but shoot my daddy He's got something coming if you don't repent. You know, if you don't stop that behavior, if you think it's going to be okay to spend your whole life slandering people, you got something coming to you on Judgment Day. Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. When I was talking about words have power, some people curse themselves. We found at times some people had a sickness that's because they curse themselves. I hate this body part. I hate this body part. I hate this body part. And boom, they get cancer in that body part. We've seen it. We've seen it in healing and deliverance. That sometimes people have cursed their own selves to the point that they bring sickness upon themselves. Literally, good words, gracious words, are sweetness to the soul and health to your body. What you, the words speak, speak the word all day long. Speak the word all day long. You're going to have health. You're going to have sweetness in your soul. Speak the word to one another. You'll change someone's life choosing to speak love towards them. Proverbs 15, 1 through 2. A soft answer turn away, turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouths of fools pour out folly. So choose to have soft answers, even when you could say something. Even when you know, say someone complains about something and you know they've done a whole lot worse, you can't be like, 
excuse me, do you forget that you did X, Y, Z? That's not going to solve the situation. It's not going to solve the situation. A soft answer, okay, God bless you. <laughs> you know? Oh, I've had people downtown, I'm like, I love you. They're like, I hate you. I'm like, I love you anyway. <laughs> so they, they're upset. They're hurting. Yeah. They don't believe that anyone loves them anyway. They've been, they feel, felt hated their whole life. Somebody says, I love them. They're like, yeah, sure. Can't stand you. Get, out, get away from me with that joy. Some people are offended by your joy. Uh, it's true. It happens. All right. Here's more verses, but I didn't read them. I'll, I'll just give you the verses. You guys can read them later. Proverbs 10.31 and Psalms 12.3-4. They're just more about the tongue. And there's a lot of, you got to understand, when I do these studies, there's so many verses I don't even use. I don't even put in the document. Um, and then there's some I highlight a certain color, so it's like a maybe verse <laughs> to use. Colossians 3.8. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. That's what the Lord says to us. This is Colossians. This is trying to train up the church and how they should be today. This is direction for us, the body today. You got to Now you have to put it all away. You got to put away all that anger, all that wrath and malice, slander, obscene talk. Can't do it no more. So if you think, oh, it's okay if I just joke, some coarse joking. No, that's another talk. The Bible says a lot about coarse joking. Some people think they could say all kinds of stuff and say, oh, it's just a joke. No, no, no. You'd be careful with your jokes. If your jokes aren't funny, they're not funny. They're sometimes it's coming out of the evilness of your heart trying to play it off as a joke. That's not funny. You can hurt people with your jokes, right? We see it all the time. Romans 3, 13 I'm going to leave that. It's just talking about the throat as the open grave and their tongues to deceive and the venom of ashes under their lips. There's just so many verses nailing this in. It's like, once again, it's one of those topics where the Lord's like beating a dead horse. It's like, you will get this. <laughs> please get this. Like, I'm begging you, please try to tame your tongue. Proverbs 17, 27 through 28. Whoever restrains his words has knowledge, and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding, even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. Proverbs 25, 18. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a war club, a sword, or a sharp arrow. Philippians 2, 14. Do all things without grumbling or complaining. That's a big one. Grumbling and complaining. What, what got Israel in trouble in the, in the desert? Grumbling and complaining. We don't have no meat. I'm tired of this manna. We don't have no water. We don't have this. You were going to die out here. Complaining, complaining, complaining. With their words, look at what they did with their words. Look at what happened to them. Or speaking doubt. They spoke doubt about what the, the 12 spies saw. They spoke doubt. Look at the repercussions. The Lord said, yeah, exactly what you said is what you're going to get. How many times in scripture exactly what somebody said is exactly what they got? Their words had an effect. So do your best to not grumble and complain. Do your best. Proverbs 11, 9. With his mouth, the godless man would destroy his neighbor. But by knowledge, the righteous are delivered. 1 Peter 2, 1. So put away all malice and all deceit and all hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Put it all away. Psalms 139, 4. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Now this is powerful. Even before we even speak the word, the Lord knows what we're thinking, what's in our heart. That's why we need to start at the root, which is the heart and the mind. You need it because not everything you say out loud, you say it in your head. The Lord knows that too. You may say some things about sister whoever in your head, like, uh huh. And in your head, you're saying some nonsense. The Lord knows even before you speak it. And you best believe you'll be accountable even for, you know, your heart attitudes and the hate. When it talks about hate, that's a heart attitude. That we'll be held accountable for hate in our heart we'll be held accountable for our thoughts too guys it's not just what 
you let out of the word, out of your mouth. But what you consistently think, yeah, you'll be held accountable for that too if it's evil. Now, obviously, there's forgiveness of sins, and there, and he washes us clean and all of that. But we can't go on calling ourselves Christians in our whole life, the awful, evil person in our mind that nobody knows about. A lot of people get away. On the outside, they maintain a good image. They maintain a good image, and everyone thinks, oh, that person's so sweet. They're so kind. And secretly inside, they hate all kinds of people, and they curse all kinds of people. And behind closed doors, they get home, and they let it out. Right? There's a lot of people who may not get caught in this lifetime, but they're going to be caught in front of the living God. So you better be careful that your mind and your heart are right. And think and feel kindly towards one another. Proverbs 20, 19. Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a simple babbler. Do you know someone who has a severe, like a gossiping problem? You're next, babe. I don't care if you think that's your best friend. You're next. Don't be surprised if it's already happening. You probably think, oh, they would never. Yeah, they would. If they talk about their mama, their sister, yeah. their brother, their husband, you think you're just exempt? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I'm so yeah. perfect. They're never going to talk about it. No. You don't even want... You, there, people say, oh, as a Christian, we're supposed to forgive. We're supposed to do all this. No. Another talk that I may give late, down the road, boundaries. I'm huge on boundaries. I'm huge... We must forgive, right? But we're not called to be in relationship with every person. I tell people, okay, so if someone molested you all your life, you are called to forgive that person, but are you called to continue to maintain a relationship with that, say it's a family member? No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not called, you're not forced to stay in relationship with someone who is wicked and evil, who doesn't want to change. Yeah, you gotta forgive them, but there are boundaries. So this is an example of a boundary. There's many times where it says, don't be equally yoked, don't be separate. Yeah, there is a separation. There is a separation. If you know someone who just is a slanderer, a gossiper, a complainer, constantly negative, blah, 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 you may need to pray if that's a relationship for you to continue in. Right? Titus 3, 1 through 2. Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, <coughs> to show perfect courtesy to all people. That's a great message to remember, you know? Speak evil of no one. Stop quarreling. Be gentle with one another. Be courteous towards all people. <clears throat> it's just important. Proverbs eleven twelve. Whoever belittles his neighbors lacks sense, but a man of understanding remains silent. Once again, you're going to see that over and over. Remain silent. Just zip it. It's, that's the solution in, most, in a lot of cases. Zip it up. Zip it real good. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to have really good self-control with that tongue. Just, there's times just, I'm not even. Just, just, just say nothing. It's cool. Just let it go. Let it go and press forward. Keep it, I always tell people, the enemy will want to keep you constantly concerned with all the drama. He'll create drama in your life on purpose, on purpose, and they keep you distracted by it. Then you're not going out and fulfilling your destiny and purpose of souls. You could be so caught up with he said, she said, she did this to me, he did this to me, my hurt from when I'm a child, all this, that you lose sight of the goal of all the things God wants you to be doing in your life. And I can tell you, I've, I've had great blessings and <coughs> forgiveness. There's people in my life that way back in the day, something bad happened, we forgave, and now we have such great relationships. Mm -hmm. But if you never get to that place where you can let things go and forgive, you'll miss out on some divine connections, mm -hmm. things that God wants to do in your life. The Lord may put two people together that are, um, that is a divine friendship or a divine relationship or a divine something. Think about a marriage. God can bring a couple together and then the enemy will try to sow discord. If they can't get past that, they'll lose that opportunity of that divine relationship. Same with friends. The enemy will see, oh, that's a good friendship right there. That's a good sistership right there. Man, they really love each other. Man, they're really serving the Lord together. We can't be having all that. Demons get on it. 
than the demon that come, they sow some discord, and because people can't let it go, they magnify it, they stoke the flame, they stoke the fire, they don't let it go, they, then, then they lose places they're supposed to be. Like, they're called to be in this place. Happens at churches. How many people left churches because the fence, right? Mm -hmm. Something somebody said, something somebody did. And they were meant to be in that church. But because of that, boom, now they got, you know, rerouted on their destiny. They're no longer walking in their purpose. That divine friendship that they were supposed to do something mighty for the kingdom together is not broken. Blah, blah, blah. Right? It happens all the time. It's, this is... He has the same song and dance. Come on. The enemy has done this time and time again. All throughout history. Um, I'm not going to read this one, but I'll give it to you. Proverbs 16, 27. Psalms 35, 28. Then my tongue shall tell of your righteousness and of your praise all day long. I just threw this one in there because this is just a good example of what we should be doing with our tongue. You know, tell of God's righteousness and his praise all day long. What was David doing a lot of the time? Going around singing the praises of the Lord. And look at all the stuff he had coming against him. Sometimes he's like living in a cave on the run for his life. And he's sitting there praising the Lord. Like, who cares? I don't care about any of the drama. I don't got time for no demon. I got time for no drama. I got time for none of that. It's just me and you, Lord. I'm praising you. I'm worshiping you. You know, when the disciples are thrown in jail, they didn't feel like, I can't believe they threw us in jail over like sitting there talking, they could have sat there and just chopped it up. Like, can you believe how unfair this is? We're supposed to be serving the Lord and now we're sitting in jail. And blah, blah, blah. They could have sat there and complained all night. what they do? No, forget it. We're just going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to worship songs. We're going to sing songs. Who cares? Don't waste your life complaining. You, you're, could you imagine on your deathbed, you look back and you're like, look at how much time I spent complaining. You know how your phone tells you, like, oh, you spent this much time on this app and this much time. Could you imagine at the end of our life, we look at this meter, it's like, you spent this many hours on complaining, this many hours on gossiping, this many hours, you know, doing this. That would, that, that wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> Thank God. I mean, I hope on Judgment Day. I guess we're going to have to see, we're going to have to see an account of everything we did then, you know. Psalms 35, 28. Then my tongue, oh. Oh, Lord, help me. Matthew 12, 34. You bread of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Time and time again, you're going to see that same, that same theme. James 4, 11, Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. And this is in the New Testament, guys. This is James. It's not Old Testament. This is New Testament. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. But you're not, basically what to take away from that is don't speak evil against um, another. Proverbs 16, 28. A dishonest man spreads strife and a whisperer separates close friends. It's so sad. The enemy does that all the time. They'll be like a little group of friends. And then suddenly he'll be like spreading discord back and forth with the different friends. And then suddenly there's no more friend group. So sad. <coughs> see it in high school. You see it all over the place. Church. Whatever, you'll see a worship team or something, they're all in unity and the enemy will just start separating them. <clears throat> Proverbs 16, 28. A dishonest man spreads strife and... Okay, wait, oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Last verse, 2 Corinthians 12, 20. For I fear that perhaps when I come, I may find you not as I wish, that you may find me not as you wish, that perhaps there may be quarreling, jealousy, anger, hostility, slander, gossip, Conceit and disorder. Paul was concerned he was going to go back and find this beautiful church that he worked so hard on. He literally like got stoned for multiple times, prison for, all that. And then he puts in all this work. He gets all these people saved, going out into the streets of all these heathens and getting them saved, getting them in a church, spending all this time training them up, teaching them this, teaching them that. And he leaves. He's like, man, I'm worried when I come back. Like he's already hearing rumors. People are writing letters. He's hearing up, I'm hearing there might be some discord in this church. He's like, I just put in all this work. I'm worried I'm going to come back. You know, perhaps I may find you, not as I wish, that, you know, there may be all this issues, hostility, jealousy, quarreling, slander, gossip, conceit, and disorder. He's like, I put this all together, and I'm concerned when I come back. It's going to be totally destroyed because you guys can't get it together and just be the body and love one another and tame your tongues to one another. 
So that's the last verse. As you see, the Lord feels very strongly about this topic. It is an area we can all grow in. Nobody, nobody can say, you know, I can't grow in this area. Everybody can grow in this area, right? So this is for everyone. If you're watching the replay online um, and you're watching it on my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my YouTube. Um, and there's many more teachings. If you like this teaching on my YouTube, I have many more teachings like this. Uh, please enjoy. Thank you.